Welcome to the Spy Collection. My name is Anastasios and today's artifact comes from the Cold War era, from Germany. It's the Minox C sub-miniature camera which can be considered as the last widely used spy camera from Minox. There was some limited use of future models, but Minox C was the last that was so widely adapted across multiple intelligence agencies and was even part of several official covert photography training programs. Since their introduction in 1936, Minox cameras were quickly adapted by most intelligence agents around the world due to their sub-miniature size, quality and ease of use. After their initial model called Riga and the Alpha and B models came the C, the one we are looking at today. This C model was introduced in 1969 and it was the first electronic sub-miniature camera of Minox. Unlike all the previous ones, this one was powered by a small battery. Because of that, it was slightly larger than the previous one, the B model. So, although Model C saw some adoption by the KGB, Stasi, the CIA, MI6, ASIO and several smaller intelligence organizations, it wasn't as popular as the previous models. This Model C was manufactured from 1969 and until 1978, but throughout this decade it had two generations. The cameras produced from 1969 to 1970 had the compliant lenses, like the camera you see here. And all models from 1970 and until 1978 had the Minox lenses. Example of that you can see here. In terms of its controls, this is the film speed, the slow speed indicator, the shutter speed, the shutter check lever, the shutter release button, the counter and the focusing dial. The small hole over here is the electronic light sensor and here you have the shutter. Its operation is pretty simple. Based on the configured settings, once you press the shutter release button, the shutter will open and expose the film that is sitting behind it. To better understand this, let me open it up. And you can better see it in this camera that has a battery installed. The light sensor, the shutter from the front side, and the viewfinder from the rear side. If we take a photo, you will see the shutter opening up. If we press this small notch that you see over here, we can open up the camera. And this is where the spools of the film are placed. In front you see the shutter and here is where the film gets exposed once we open up the shutter. Here is how the films look like. As you see, there are two spools and the film in between. And this is placed like that. Now on the other side of the camera, when we open it up, we have the battery compartment. The camera needs an S27PX silver oxide 6 volt battery to operate. Regarding the film cartridge, it wasn't used in this format. Secret agents were trained to make it even smaller. Specifically, after using the Minox C to covertly photograph their target, mainly classified documents, they were going to a dark room, taking apart the film spools and removing the tiny roll of film from there. Then they were securely covering it and placing it in a concealment device for delivery to their handler. Those cameras came with all sorts of accessories but the one that was most extensively used was this chain. Mm. 
you see that the chain has some beads on it. Those are focal points. To attach the chain, you basically press it and rotate it. Then you simply use this as a measuring chain and its beads to set the camera to the perfect distance from a document and take a crystal clear photo of it. This photograph shows John Walker Jr. doing exactly that during a reconstruction for the FBI that was used in his trial. Walker was a US Navy chief warrant officer who was trained as a communication specialist. From 1967 to 1985 he was recruited by the KGB as a spy and to execute his covert photography missions he used a Minox C like the ones we demonstrate in this video. Specifically he was using the Minox C camera to covertly photograph cryptographic material so that the Soviet KGB could intercept secure communications of the US Navy and using those stolen codes decrypt the messages as well as analyze and discover flaws that they could exploit in the United States cryptographic systems. A great summary of his spying activity was given by Keith Melton, a well-known intelligence historian who said on the show Top Secrets of the CIA at the Military Channel on February 5, 2013 the following. The Soviets had intercepted our coded messages, but they had never been able to read them. And with Walker providing the code cards, this was one half of what they needed to read the messages. The other half they needed were the machines themselves. Though Walker could give them repair manuals, he couldn't give them machines. So within a month of John Walker volunteering his services, the Soviets arranged through the North Koreans to hijack a United States Navy ship with its cipher machines. And that was the USS Pueblo. And in early 1968, they captured the Pueblo. They took it into Wonsan Harbor. They quickly took the machines off, flew them to Moscow. Now Moscow had both parts of the puzzle. They had the machine and they had an American spy in place in Norfolk with the code cards and with access to them. Of course, Walker didn't have a good end since he got sentenced to life in prison. Here is a quick overview of how it happened. KGB Lieutenant Colonel Valery Martinov had been recruited as a spy by the CIA. One day, while at his KGB office in Moscow, he overheard discussions about Walker and he reported that to his American handlers. This eventually led to the arrest and sentence of Walker, but who knew that Martinov would have a far worse fate just a couple of years later, in 1987. What happened was that the KGB had penetrated the US intelligence community by recruiting CIA officer Aldrich Ames and FBI special agent Robert Hansen. Allegedly, based on information provided by those two penetrations, the KGB learned about Martinov and then an elaborate capture operation took place. KGB counterintelligence officer Vitaly Yurchenko, who was allegedly a defector to the US, Note that this is still unclear if that was a covert operation or an actual defection. After some time in the US working with the CIA as a defector, he decided to return back to the Soviet Union and another KGB counterintelligence officer, Colonel Viktor Cherkasin, used this as an opportunity to set up a lure for the capture of Martinov. Specifically, Viktor Cherkasin tasked Martinov to serve as a member of an honor guard escorting Yurchenko back to Moscow and of course the KGB arrested him when he got there. Vitaly Yurchenko was later awarded the Order of the Red Star from the Soviet Union for a successful infiltration operation but it is not known if that was for this defection to the US or some other operation. So in summary this is how the KGB arrested Martinov, the person that gave the intelligence that led to Walter's arrest. Martinov was later executed as a spy. But Walker didn't operate alone. He had created a small spy network and one of them was US Navy communication specialist Jerry Whitworth, who was also discovered and arrested by the FBI. Walker initially tricked Whitworth by convincing him that the espionage was for Israel, but he eventually learned the true recipient, the KGB. The KGB had also supplied Jerry Whitworth with a Minox C camera and trained him on cover photography using it. This is an actual photo of it 
from the FBI investigation after his arrest, you see his Minox C in the red circle. Although this is by far the most widely known case where a Minox C camera was used for espionage, there were many more. Even Australia's main intelligence agency, known as ASIO, recently shared the following on their official Twitter account. This easily concealed Minox C subminiature camera was a key ASIO surveillance tool in the 70s. It captured clandestine meetings between those who sought to threaten the security of Australia and Australians. And after this quick espionage history linked to the Minoxy subminiature cameras, you probably have a better idea of how important commercially available subminiature cameras were for spies. The Minoxy was easy to purchase almost anywhere in the world, very easy to conceal, had excellent quality, and accessories like this measuring chain made covert photography of documents a trivial task. But as you saw from this very brief spy history example, this world is full of deception, lies and danger. This is why we say that nothing is as it seems.